Picture this, Patricia. Your new home will be a grand masterpiece. It will be architect designed with an all-glass back capturing your breathtaking ocean views. A true statement piece. Ah, oh, Siobhan, that sounds incredible. I want something truly special. Oh, it will be, darling. It'll be simply gorgeous. It will embrace nature and create a statement of refined taste that showcases <laughs> my brilliance. That sounds exactly what Bruce and I are looking for. Harry, you've built for me before. I trust you. Do you have any comments? Well, Patricia, it's a vision, no doubt. But we need to consider the stability, especially being close to the ocean. What about bracing walls? Harry, let's not bog Patricia down with structural details. Architects know best about design and we're aiming for stunning aesthetics here. I trust Siobhan's vision. Harry, can't you make it work without compromising the design? Well, Patricia, elegance and stability can go hand in hand, but we mean to be mindful of the structural elements. Patricia, I want both elegance and stability. Bracing walls are important. Matt, how can we strike that balance? Bracing walls are essential, especially with those expansive glass doors and windows. I think there's a way we can incorporate some bracing walls into this design, but it's going to take some work. Let's discuss your options. G'day, this is Matt Cornell from Cornell Engineers. Thanks for following along so far. So beautiful homes with expansive views of the coast do need bracing, and it's a question we get quite often. At this early stage of design, it's a great time to be thinking about how to brace the building. It's probably a way away before the builder's been chosen or the engineer's been chosen at this preliminary meeting. So Siobhan and Patricia are really lucky that their builder and engineer did attend this early meeting. Now is the perfect time to be talking about ways of bracing the building to keep the structure from reducing the aesthetic, that beautiful expansive view. So let's talk about what some of your options are. So we'll keep this chat fairly short and sweet because in reality, these questions should be directed to a structural engineer during the design phase, as we, as we said, and even better, should be directed to a structural engineer during the planning stage. So quickly, the options for bracing on a large expansive house where there aren't a lot of walls. So if the view or the glass is all out here, and the first real opportunity for a bracing wall is right back here, maybe 10 to 15 meters away from where the glass is, then when the wind blows on this building, it's going to shake. We don't want that beautiful expansive house, whether it's a cheaper house or a really expensive house, we don't want this house to move around and we certainly don't want to be relying on the glass to stop it from vibrating and moving around. So we really do need to get some bracing, some sideways restraint into this area. When the homeowner and the architect come up with the idea that they'd like a lot of glass looking out through here from the lounge room out to the ocean, then we don't have a lot of choice but to go with option one, which is a portal frame. So a portal frame involves a strong column, a strong column, and a strong beam. And it's the way that the beam and the column are connected at the top of the column, and the way that the column is connected to the floor frame or to the slab provides that lateral restraint that we need for a bracing wall. So that's option one. The downside with this system is that it still moves a little bit. It needs to be really, really strong big members for this system to be really strong and stiff so that there's no load put on the glazing. And we certainly don't want to put any load on the glazing. Option two is to try and sneak a little bit of wall either side of the opening. Sometimes the door tracks or the door jams need some space. Sometimes there's an outdoor kitchen or a barbecue area 
and shelving and benching that go on the outside of this glass area and sometimes we're able to get a little bit of bracing wall here when we have a little bit of skinny wall short length of wall like that then we're probably going to go with a structural steel frame that's braced again it's fairly strong columns um, a cross member across the top that connects to the roof framing and these diagonal members that transfer the bracing loads to those lateral loads that we're talking about down to the ground. In this case the loads are fairly large into the footings or into the slab or into the floor framing so a structural engineer needs to be consulted on how best to get rid of those loads. Option three for bracing is the one that nobody wants to see and that is a big X right through the middle of the opening. We're not going to even count that. That doesn't come into consideration. We can't do that. It's going to ruin the view. So really when we're looking at expansive views, lots of glass, a structural engineer is definitely involved and required to help you size and work out how big either the portal frame is or the brace frame needs to be and then where those loads get transferred into the rest of the building. Thanks again for joining us on this video. I hope that you took something away from it. If you're building a big expensive house with expansive views, don't be afraid to speak to your engineer and get them involved early in the piece. During planning stage is the perfect time to get your engineer involved. I'm Matt Cornell from Cornell Engineers. Thanks for watching.